بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد We praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى We send complete blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم His entire household, all his companions and all the scholars of this deen and those who have protected it from a four time and have brought it down to us, may Allah bless them all. And may He bless every single one of us and grant us goodness. Brothers and sisters, the pearls of peace from the noble Qur'an, I have a challenge for every one of you. The Hafiz who is reading and leading Taraweeh with me is actually visually challenged and cannot see. He has memorized the Qur'an through repetition of his father so many times and he repeated the verses until he knew them off by heart. And every day he prepares by listening to CDs. Allahu Akbar. The challenge for you is, you have eyes. What have you done? How much have you memorized? You can look, you can read. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. And may he grant us the opportunity to achieve peace through the organs that he has granted us. There are those who are challenged but are doing much more than us who do not face the same challenge. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us steadfastness. This evening we read Surah An-Nisa, the surah named after the women. Allahu Akbar. Imagine the status of a woman is such that there is no chapter of the Quran called Ar-Rijal or the men. But there is a chapter called the women. Allah is drawing our attention to the status of a woman and her rights and the fact that we are not supposed to usurp her rights. She is the one who gave birth to us. Listen to the opening verses. Ya ayyuhan nasu attaqu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida. O people, be conscious of your maker who created you from one soul. That was Adam. And he created from that soul its spouse. Eve or Hawa, may peace be upon her. And through the two of them, he caused a multitude to spread all over the earth in great numbers. Be conscious of Allah through whom or with whose name you ask one another. You use the name of Allah when you want people to believe you, when you are serious. You use it with very, very high regard. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to make us from those who use his name when we, when we are lying. When we are false, when we utter words that are untrue, that would be a big disgrace and an insult to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he says, Wal arham, and be conscious of the status of the wombs that have given birth to you. Subhanallah. Be conscious of the status of your mothers, your sisters, your daughters, your aunts, the women of the ummah and of humanity at large. Make sure you understand and realize that Allah has created you physically differently. And in several ways, there are differences. And in many ways, there are no differences. In spirituality and getting closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have equal opportunities. If anything, women go through much more and have greater opportunities sometimes through certain fronts such as childbirth, 
and being a mother, looking after the children and so on. May Allah bless our women folk, our mothers, our sisters, our spouses, and all our female relatives, the females of this ummah, as well as those of humanity at large. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah kana alaykum raqiba. It is for this reason. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Indeed, Allah is ever watchful over what you are doing. He watches, he takes record, he knows what you are doing. Don't think you can hide behind closed doors to oppress the women. No, Allah knows what you are doing. Allah listens, Allah watches, and you pay for the evil you've done. May Allah protect us. And this, we start off with it because to achieve peace, we need to understand the status of our mothers. We need to understand the status of our sisters, our spouses, our daughters. If we don't, how would we be able to achieve peace, my beloved brothers? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. This having been said, a female needs to know her status and she should not compromise it. She should understand a woman has been granted as a gift by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She should handle herself in a way that she confirms she is a gift and not a means of earning punishment and anger. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect them and us all. Amen. So Allah makes mention of another pearl of peace. In society, there are orphans. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best of creation, Allah chose for him to be an orphan. And Allah says, the status of an orphan is so high, so high, that through the blessed lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Ana wa kafilul yatimi kahatayni fil jannah. Myself and the one who is prepared to look after an orphan child shall be as close as these two fingers in paradise. And he joined the first two as I am joining them right now. May Allah grant us paradise. May he make us compassionate. May he make us from those who can reach out to the orphans and those in need as well as widows. Amin. So Allah makes mention of how important it is to fulfill the rights of these orphans. If you would like to achieve peace, understand, do not usurp the wealth of those whose parents have passed away. What happens in society? Father passed away. So someone in the family, whether it's a brother, whether it is any other male, and sometimes you might even find a female when they see these orphan children, whether they are male or female, it happens more so to the females, they usurp their wealth. They don't give them the wealth. They cheat them in inheritance. They do not give them the exact amount. They undervalue the property and estate. All this Allah has warned us about. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, <laughs> Give the orphan child his wealth or her wealth. And do not swap their good wealth with your bad wealth. You know, you have a property. So what those who would like to cheat would do, they have a little property somewhere far away, low in value, and this orphan owns a property in the center of Cape Town. So they swap it, and when the child grows up, oh, that's your property. And all the signing was done behind their backs. In such a case, what would happen? Such a person, Allah says, is consuming the fire of Jahannam in their bellies. Those who are consuming the wealth of the orphans unjustly, they are consuming nothing besides fire in their bellies. May Allah protect us from such wealth that we might think is great in number and value, but in reality it snatches away our peace. We have the loss of peace in ourselves, our offspring, our families, our health and everything else because we have usurped the wealth of those who were downtrodden and perhaps weak at one stage who did not understand. The same applies to your sisters. My beloved brothers, sort the mess out tonight. You have a problem regarding inheritance. Remember, rather give it out than to consume that which will result in loss of peace for yourself, loss of your good health, loss of the, the peace of your children and your family members as the progeny grows. May Allah protect us all. Rather solve the matter, get the people happy and give them their wealth, whatever is due to them, you will achieve a lot of peace. These are the pearls of peace. If you sort your matters of inheritance out correctly, you will definitely achieve a lot of peace. And if you don't, enmity will strike amongst children for generations to come where cousins and brothers not only will not speak to each other, but will plan each other's downfall and become upset when the other is succeeding. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us. It is not worth it. Life is too short. 
The wealth that we are usurping may be depleted in one minute at a casino by the children who have inherited that haram wealth. May Allah protect us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us, even regarding women, do not cheat them when it comes to their bridal gifts known as the mahar. Some would call it a dowry, but today I saw a beautiful translation, bridal gifts, mashallah. That is what it is. It's a gift to the bride. That is the translation of mahar. So these bridal gifts that we as Muslimin owe our spouses, my brothers, do not cheat them out of it. Do not delay that payment. Make sure you give it with a happy heart. Make sure you understand that Allah has placed it upon your shoulders. Do not cheat them because if you do, happiness shall be snatched away. Do you know sometimes women keep it in their hearts? They may not tell you, but sometimes later on they feel, look at this husband of mine. It's been 20 years. I've got six children and he still hasn't given me what he promised me the day he married me. It has happened. And it continues to happen. You've promised someone something, give it to them. Because if you don't, do you know what? You pay for that oppression. You pay for that cheating in a way that sometimes might be too dear. It might be too difficult for you to actually pass. It is cheaper for you to go through the issue by giving them their wealth and letting them pass. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So Allah says, verse number four, and give the women folk their bridal gifts graciously. Give it with a good heart. Make sure you give it to them knowing that you owe it to them because this is something that Allah has acknowledged their status by. Do you know that in Islam, a female is a queen. She is meant to be looked after by the closest male relative. At the beginning, a father, later on, a husband, later on, an adult son in the absence of that husband, and so on. Sometimes it goes to the uncles as well. Your closest male relative will look after you, my dear sister. This is how it's supposed to be. But in order to acknowledge that a woman should not be bought and sold and not inherited and so on, as used to happen in the pagan days, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it very clear to say, acknowledge them and they have the right of ownership of their own wealth, their own. One of the issues, when you marry them, give them wealth and tell them this belongs solely and only to you. At your discretion, you shall use it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and grant us goodness. Sometimes we don't even acknowledge the status of our women. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. My brothers and sisters, these are the beautiful nights of Ramadan. If we cannot sort our family matters out in these beautiful nights, which nights are we waiting for to resolve the matter? A truly wise person is he who wants to enjoy the pearls of peace by eradicating the slightest of misunderstandings before the same night that it happened. You get to bed, sort it out. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us open hearts. May he soften our hearts. May he soften the hearts of our sisters as well. Remember, it is give and take. Give and take does not mean you give and she takes, but both give and both take. May Allah protect us. So Allah says thereafter, he makes mention in details and we will not mention the various details, but verse number 11 and 12 have in them the exact proportions of inheritance of the male and the female the relatives the children the spouse and so on and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us that his system is full of justice and peace when he says you give your child so much that's what you give and there are people today who say women get less than men they say women are oppressed in islam understand that Allah says at the end of these verses, verse number 13, after 11 and 12, verse number 13, Allah says, Tilka hududullah. These are the limits of Allah. This is the law of Allah. These are the limits of Allah. Whoever is going to obey the instructions of Allah, they will achieve paradise. They will achieve goodness in this world as well as paradise beneath which rivers shall be flowing. They will dwell therein forever. And that is the greatest success. That is success. So Allah says, you follow my instructions regarding inheritance and the other limits, you will achieve success. You will achieve peace. You don't want to follow. Listen to what Allah says in verse number 14. 
وَمَنْ يَعْصِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَيَتَعَدَّ حُدُودَهُ يُدْخِلْهُ نَارًا خَالِدًا فِيهَا وَلَهُ عَذَابٌ مُهِينٌ Whoever transgresses against the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and goes beyond the limits, does not obey the limit of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will be granted entry into hellfire and for them shall be a very disgraceful punishment. Allahu Akbar. What severe warning. Do you know why there is such a severe warning? I can tell you. Because to adopt that instruction, there is so much peace and tranquility and success in it that Allah is drawing our attention to the greatest of loss that would be if we were to go against that instruction. For example, if you have a little child and you really want your child to achieve something or to do something, you may tell the child, if you do this, I will give you such a big gift. And that gift is so huge that the child would be encouraged to do it. And on the other hand, you may say, but if you don't do it, watch out. The way you word that watch out would all determine the reaction of the child. They would understand there are serious consequences, but you as a parent love your child so much, all you want is for the child to adopt the command. May Allah accept us. So this is why when Allah has expressed severe punishment, the case is that he loves for us to abstain from that which will earn his anger. He loves for us to fulfill his instruction. And this is why he warns us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. So regarding the women, let's quickly make mention of how when, they, when a person has one single daughter, she gets 50% of the wealth. Never is there a share of a male 50%. When there are two daughters or more and no sons involved, they get 66.66% or two thirds of the wealth. Never is there a percentage of males that would take away so much. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. May he bless us. Remember, we need to understand. Let's study the details of the Sharia before we open our mouths thinking and claiming that something is wrong with this law of Allah. It is such a powerful law that if we are to adopt it, we will automatically have peace not only within ourselves or outside, meaning inner peace and outer peace, but the globe at large would be at peace. The difficulty is we've, ab we've abandoned that which is divine, that which came from the top, those commandments that the Almighty has decreed and has revealed, we've abandoned them. Now we are searching for peace in something else. It doesn't come. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. And this is why Allah says, now sometimes people have already done wrong. Sometimes they've already usurped the wealth. Sometimes they've already tread the wrong path. They've trodden the wrong path. So what Allah says, remember to repent before it is too late. Tawbah is for those who commit sin and immediately after that, they repent. For them, Allah says, shall be forgiveness. But in verse number 18 of the same surah, Surah An-Nisa, Allah says, وَلَيْسَتِ التَّوْبَةُ لِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السَّيِّئَاتِ حَتَّى إِذَا حَضَرَ أَحَدَهُمُ الْمَوْتِ قَالَ إِنِّي تُبْتُ الْآنِ Tawbah and repentance is not for a person who leaves it for the last minute until death is overtaking him or her. Then he says, oh, now I repent. I've already seen the angels and I've already got to the point of death. Allah says, that does not work. You know, with us, they realize that human beings, this is obviously on a different note. They've realized that human beings leave things for last minute. No matter what, you want to come to the masjid, last minute you're rushing. You want to do this, last minute this is happening. So much so that for those who fly abroad, they've created a website called lastminute.com. <laughs> Subhanallah. May Allah protect us. Imagine. But for Toba, there is no lastminute.com, my brothers and sisters. You're not going to get that bargain. Inna Allah ta'ala yaqbilu tawbat al-abdi ma lam yugharghir. Allah accepts the tawbah of a worshipper for as long as they have not got to the point of gargara, which means the soul coming out of the body at a certain point, it is known as a gargara. That point, tawbah, the doors are closed. May Allah protect us. Then you cannot go through. You've missed your flight to paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May he open our doors. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he wants to forgive you. 
He loves to forgive you. He is waiting for you. Shaitan is the one who makes you lose hope. And shaitan is the one who makes you think for a moment, I am healthy, I'm okay, let me sin a little bit more. You know, she's a pretty woman or he's a very good looking man. I'm still young, I don't think I'm going to die right now. And you don't know, you may die in the act. May Allah forgive us all and grant us steadfastness. So Allah says, Wallahu yuridu an yatuba alaykum wa yuridu alladheena yattabi'oon ash-shahawati an tamilu maylan azeema. Amazing verse number 27 of Surah An Nisa. Allah says, Allah wants to forgive you, but those who follow their whims and fancies and lusts, they want to turn away from the path. They want you as well to turn away from that path in a great way. We don't want to turn away, we want to turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So never think, I'm too young to repent, I'm too young to go for Hajj. If Hajj is compulsory upon you, you must start applying from now every year until you get accreditation and you go for Hajj. May Allah protect us. There may come a time when you think you're old now and now it's fine, I can go for Hajj. You don't get accreditation. It could happen. Then what happens? You die. How will you answer Allah? Allah says, but from the age of 20, it was farad on you. You left it up to the age of 55. You've died now without it. It was farad on you for more than 25 or 30, 35 years and you did not fulfill it. May Allah protect us. Imagine something compulsory on you and you've quit it for 35 years. May Allah forgive us. So this is why don't think you are too young to engage in the obedience of Allah. Come to the masajid. We are all young, mashallah. Like they say, youth, anyone whose age is made up of a double digit is young. Allahu Akbar. That would mean 10 to 99, mashallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Today when you see an old man with a walking stick, you tell him you're looking old. He says, hey, stop insulting me. Because people want to look young and feel young. So remember, come to the masajid. MashaAllah, we see the youth. We see the young. The weekend today, MashaAllah, let's make use of it. May Allah bless us and grant us every form of goodness. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tells us how important it is to resolve matters when it comes to marital dispute. Remember, this is Surah An-Nisa. It has in it many verses, many pearls. We could extract so many. But let's concentrate on that which is connected to the women. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you are married and you are fearing that there would be a dispute between you and your spouse, then there are stages to resolve the matter. Do not be too arrogant to resolve the matter. A lot of the times a husband says, I don't have a problem. If you have a problem, go and do what you want. That type of attitude will result in snatching away of peace. Remember, you think divorce is just words that you utter cheaply and you just flick a woman away as and when you wish. If that's the case, you pay for it. You pay for it. You need to try as hard as possible to make things work. Really. You need to try as hard as possible because sometimes you may let go of something that was the best for you and you will never get something as good as that. Like we say, if the man has 10 problems or 10 issues with him, you may never get a man who has less than 10. He might have been that 90% compatibility which is about the best you would ever get. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So we've got to give and take. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in these beautiful verses, وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ شِقَاقَ بَيْنِهِمَا فَبْعَثُوا حَكَمًا مِّنْ أَهْلِهِ وَحَكَمًا مِّنْ أَهْلِهَا إِنْ يُرِيدَا إِصْلَاحًا يُوَفِّقِ اللَّهُ بَيْنَهُمَا Verse number 35, Surah An-Nisa. If you are fearing dispute between the two of them, then let there be an arbitrator appointed from her side and from his side. If the two of them would like to resolve the matter, Allah will grant them acceptance to resolve the matter. When your intention is, I want to solve the problem, the problem will be solved. But when your intention is, I want to prove who was right and wrong, and I want to fix this woman, or I want to fix this man, you will never solve the problem. This we learn something great, a pearl of peace. Any dispute we have in society, my brothers and sisters, or in families, if both parties enter the arbitration with the intention of resolve, Believe me, Allah will accept them for resolve. But if one has entered with the wrong intention or both have entered with wrong intentions, come what may, 
you will never ever resolve that problem. So let's ask ourselves, do we want to solve matters? It is cheaper for us. It is cheaper for us to panel beat a vehicle that has a few dents in it than to buy a whole new one. Allahu Akbar. May Allah bless us. May Allah protect us. One wonders you might buy the new one and the accelerator pedal is so loose that you might smash straight into a tree and it will be written off. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all and grant us goodness. So Allah says, Verse number 130 of the same surah. Allah says, and if finally and ultimately the two have separated after having tried as hard as possible to make things work, they have separated. Yes, it's permissible to separate. And Allah will grant both of them goodness. From this we learn another pearl of peace. If you've been through a divorce, my brother or my sister, do not engage in mud slinging. You know what is mud slinging? You throw things at her. She, throw things, she throws things back at you. Society starts hearing rumor of one side and the other society hears rumor of the other. Those people think you are bad and these people think she is bad. This is not how we operate. It will snatch away your peace. Keep quiet and live your life. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allah says, we will grant you goodness and we will grant her goodness as well. When you involve in mudslinging, your goodness is gone. And if she's involved in it, hers is also snatched away. You want peace? Here is the ingredients of peace. After a divorce, be, be civil when it comes to child custody. Be mature. Understand that the children really need both parents. What happened between you should not affect those children by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you are civil and you are mature and you are a believer and you go about it in a proper manner, wallahi, it will result in lots and lots of peace. Today, we look at the non-Muslims and we see how they are when it comes to child custody and access. They are so free in fulfilling those rights. But the Muslim, the one who reads Salah in the first saf, finds it difficult to allow access to the other party of the child. Why? They say, but he's like this and she's like that. No. If Allah's law is this, surrender to it because through that you shall enter paradise or otherwise. May Allah protect us. May Allah grant us goodness. These are the pearls of peace. This is what we learn from the Quran. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of something important and that is jealousy. It is important for us if we'd like peace to protect our hearts from being jealous of those who are achieving things. Those who have excelled. Those who have more than us in any way. Remember jealousy. There are words in the Arabic language that describe aspects of jealousy, but the English language does not qualify to translate certain words. So let's try and do justice to it. The jealousy that is prohibited is that which you wish that Allah take away the gift he has given someone and put it on you or take it away from them because you don't want them to have it. That is jealousy. But if you wish for them goodness and you want to have similar goodness, that is not jealousy. It is known as ribta. That when a person would like something good that another person has and they don't want it to be removed from that particular person. For example, you have a very wealthy man, like we said the other day. Oh Allah, this man has two million rands. Ya Allah, grant him even more and grant me three, like we said the other day. MashaAllah. So you don't want him to lose what he has. You want him also to have and you also want the same applies to a person who might have knowledge a person who might have some form of spirituality closeness to Allah you say ya Allah grant him more increase and grant myself as well more in terms of increase may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all so Allah says in verse number 54 <laughs> فَقَدْ آتَيْنَا آلَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَآتَيْنَاهُمْ مُلْكًا عَظِيمًا Are they becoming jealous? Jealous of that or envious in the wrong way of that which we have favored some above others. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, You want to know whom we have favored? From amongst those we have favored is the Prophet Abraham. Do you know what we gave him? Allah says. And these are some of the things we should all be aiming for. Although we will not get prophethood, but Allah can grant us a portion of it in terms of knowledge. So Allah says, 
we have given Abraham, may peace be upon him, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, and his family, revelation, number one. Knowledge of revelation and revelation itself. And we have given them wisdom, great wisdom. And we have given them kingdom. They were in authority. They had knowledge. They had wisdom. They had so much. And they had lots of wealth as well. Subhanallah. Allah says we gave it to them. We give whomsoever we wish. Do not become jealous of what Allah has bestowed some over the other. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and grant us goodness. I'd like to end off by making mention of one very powerful point. This evening we read a verse. A pearl of peace for sure. Allah says... And this is verse number 86. Whenever you are greeted with a greeting, whenever you are greeted with a greeting, then respond with a greeting better than it or at least equate it. Say something equal. Allah is taking account of everything that you do and say. Allah knows. Someone says, Assalamu alaikum, may peace be upon you. Do not take it lightly. These are pearls of peace. When they have greeted you with the greeting of peace, you need to respond with a bigger greeting of greater peace. Wa alaikum assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah's peace be upon you and His mercy and His blessings. Subhanallah. Look at the powerful pearl of peace in our greeting. So remember, when we are greeting each other, don't just suffice by the highs and the byes. No, say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh with the intention of increasing the peace. And believe me, if your intention is correct, in that particular case, you understand the value of the person who has greeted you and you, the love and the bond in the heart is increased. Should I not show you to something, if you were to fulfill it, it would result in love between you and increase of it. Spread the peace and the salam between you, amongst you. Assalamu alaikum. Whether you know the person or not, to sallim ala kulli man arafta wa man lam ta'rif. You greet those whether you know them or you don't know them. Today, we don't know someone and we just stay far away from them. We look at them as though they are the criminals. Astaghfirullah. Greet them, smile and let it let you yourself hear the response of the greeting by the will of Allah. It will result in an increase of love and increase of peace, both inner and outer. What a beautiful environment we would have. Similar to what we have this evening in this beautiful house of Allah. May Allah gather us in paradise and may he resolve all our matters. May he grant cure to all those in the hospitals who are sick and ill. And may he grant shifa really to anyone who is suffering in any way. May he alleviate the suffering of our brothers and sisters across the globe this evening. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a good death and grant us paradise until we meet again tomorrow. Insha'Allah. We say wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdih. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiru. أغفرك ونتوب إليك